In this tutorial, we will do cooperative multi-agent reinforcement learning. There are a lot of scenarios in real-world application when several robots should cooperate to achieve a common goal. For example, as shown in this simulation, we will train agents so that each of them stops at a specified point without clashing with other robots, in a narrow space. To approach this problem, we will use VDN. Now let's see the theory of this method. VDN stands for Value Decomposition Networks. VDN copes with the problem of cooperative multi-agent reinforcement learning with a single joint reward. Such problems are difficult because of large combined action, observation spaces and difficulty to determine an action that brings high reward not to a single agent, but to a whole team. There is also a phenomenon that, as training goes on, some agents stop doing anything at all. This problem is called lazy agent, and it arises due to partial observability. The novelty of VDN lies in the fact that it learns to decompose the team value function into agent-wise value functions. The main assumption is that joint action value function for the system can be additively decomposed into value functions across agents. The meaning of this equation is that action value function of the whole group is nearly equal to the sum of action value functions learned only from each agent's local observations. Let's see a visual explanation of the network in case of two agents. In the right image, local observations enter the networks of two agents over time. Then, observations pass through the low-level linear layer to the recurrent layer. Then a dueling layer produces individual Q values that are summed to a joint Q function for training. At the same time, actions of each agent are produced from each individual network. In order to decrease number of learnable parameters, certain network weights between agents are shared. Parameter sharing also contributes to the concept of agent invariance, which is useful for avoiding the lazy agent problem. Now let's see the definition of the problem we are going to simulate. We have three car-like robots on the field. Each of these robots is an independent agent. The field is a square with 14 meters side length. There is also a 2 meter wide area outside the field. Agents can move inside this area. If the center of any agent crosses a boundary of the gray field, an episode ends. There is one goal point on the gray field for each agent. Vertical distances between goals are 3 meters. Each episode, vertical coordinates of goal points are selected randomly from six possible combinations. Horizontal coordinate of each goal is selected randomly in range from minus 2 to 2 meters. Each goal point has not only coordinates, but also orientation. In this simulation, for each episode, orientation is selected randomly from 0 or 180 degrees. There is a safety zone outside of each agent. If safety zones of the agents overlap with each other, or if a safety zone of an agent overlaps with the black region, a negative reward will be applied. So, agents should head to the goal without colliding with each other. The objective of this simulation is to learn a policy so that each agent in the group gets to the specified goal point. The state is consisting of position and orientation of each agent, difference of goal position and an agent's current position. Since we have three agents and each agent has six parameters, the state will be described by one-dimensional array with 18 elements. Each agent observes location of all agents and difference of its own location and goal. Note that each agent knows only its own goal, but doesn't know where are goals of other agents. Since an agent doesn't know other agents' goals, observation space is described by one-dimensional array with 12 elements. An agent has 11 discrete actions. 5 forward actions, 5 backward actions and 1 action that makes it stop moving. 
Although agents have individual observations and are responsible for individual actions, each agent receives only the joint reward. Reward increases proportionally to each agent's distance to the goal and orientation difference. For each agent that has reached its own goal, a reward of 0.333 is given. If all agents reach their goal positions, a reward of 1 is given, and the episode ends. If a safe zone of any of the agents overlaps with another agent's safe zone or the black area, the reward is deduced proportionally to overlapping area. If the center of any agent crosses over the border of gray and black regions, a reward of minus 1 is applied and the episode ends. In this tutorial, as a base code of VDN, we are using this deep moral toolkit repository. Thanks for the author for sharing this code. In this page we can find package explanation and links to papers describing each method. Make sure that you have installed all required Python libraries written in the requirements text file. Also, I modified the code to make it work with RAS and the problem we are trying to solve. Now, let's see the code. Download the cooperative Maro RAW zip file and extract it to the home directory. Move to the scripts directory. Open the Maro VDN train script. Here we are defining arrays for observations obtained from gazebo, goal positions of each robot and total observation that will be defined as a state. In the gazebo env class, methods for simulation are defined. In these line services to start, pause and reset robots positions are defined. Also, publishers that publish each robot wheel velocities and steering angle are defined. In the step function, according to an action index, robot translational velocity and yaw angle velocity is defined. Since we are calculating steering angle trigonometrically, to avoid zero division error, try and accept statements are used. In this part, robot velocities and steering angles are published. Then we unpause simulation, wait for a time period defined by time delta and pause the simulation again. According to the observations obtained during simulation, reward is calculated. Here we are calculating a state. Note that we are normalizing the observations to avoid divergence during neural network optimization. In this part, observations of each robot are prepared. As we said previously, each robot can get only partial observations. In the reset function, we are resetting the robot's initial positions and goal positions. In these lines, according to a random value, y coordinates of goal positions are decided. Here, x coordinates of goal positions are set. In this part, we set angle of goal arrow markers. In these lines, we set the initial position of robot 1. To avoid collision of several robots at the beginning of the simulation, we are drawing rectangles on the canvas and calculating sum of overlapping area. If overlapping area is 0, we set it as initial position. In the get model state function, we are obtaining position and yaw angle of robots. Since Gazebo publishes orientation in form of quaternion, we convert it to yaw angle. In the clash calculation function, the robot's positions are drawn and calculation of overlapping area of safety zones is done. In this part, coordinates of each point of rectangle are calculated using a rotation matrix. Then, we are translating each rectangle according to robot position in gazebo. Here, parameters of replay buffer, network and learning are set. 
In the while statement we are running learning and logging processes. Now let's execute the code. To start the gazebo world, execute the ROS2 launch robot gazebo main launch XML file. While launching this file, an error may occur. It seems that this is a bug related to ROS2 control. A similar error is mentioned in this issue of ROS2 control. Probably this bug will be fixed in the future, but for now, if this error emerges, relaunch the file. If the file launches normally, there should not be any red lines. After the gazebo world launches successfully, run the Marl VDN train script to begin training. Using our Viz2 we can visualize robot goal positions and overlapping area. To test the model, launch the Marl VDN test script. Unfortunately, I could not train so that each robot reached its goal position, but with proper hyperparameters tuning and reward shaping it should be possible.